In this video, we are going to talk about greens. Do you mix your own or just go out to the art store and buy a tube of green and use that? In my philosophy of using a limited palette, you stay away from greens unless you absolutely need to use one out of the tube. But if you're doing landscapes, seascapes and still life even, you know, with a bunch of vegetables, you know, leafy greens, you still don't want to use green from the tube, especially if you are a beginner. That's what this video is going to be about. And let's get into how to mix greens and why. Hi, my name is Vita Evenson and I paint grease. Okay, so we have a very limited palette here. Um, I am not affiliated with any of these brands, not yet anyways. And as soon as I reach a thousand, if anybody wants to subscribe, that would be really great to help me get up to the thousand mark uh, so that uh, I can really move this channel forward. Here I'm using a, a flake white substitute. It's not an actual flake white, but I like the feel of it. It's uh, softer and more of a yellow white. I have a Windsor Lemon. This is Windsor Newton. Permanent Rose or Quinacridone, also Windsor Newton. Another Mussini Ultramarine Blue. And I am using a uh, Schmincke, which is the same brand uh, that uh, Mussini is, um, a German brand of uh, Burnt Sienna. And this is my basic palette. And from this, we will be mixing our greens. So uh, the basic lesson of mixing greens, of course, is blue and yellow will create a green. This is a very uh, strong green. And if you put it as is, on your painting. It is going to be glaring and awful and you just don't want to do it. So here are some tricks. You can take, let's take some of the green over here, some of the green over here, just kind of divide it up. Let's see what we can come up with. And this is just mixing the blue and yellow. Now, my first move is to add burnt sienna. So let's see what we can come up with. Now you can see the difference between the two, right? Can I get that uh, without it glaring too much? It's a brownish green. And even though it may not look like the green that you're looking at, either in your reference photo or if you're painting plein air, do yourself a favor and really dull down the greens. Make them brownish, grayish, just dull, dull, dull. And in certain areas, like in your highlight area, or if you're creating a pathway, a visual pathway, not an actual path, but a visual pathway through your painting to move the eye from one point to the next, you can add little tiny specks of, of this strong green as it is to, um, to help move the eye along. But Please, please, please stay away from it. Okay, so I am going to mix up more colors. And add a little bit of ultramarine blue and it has a speck of burnt sienna. Okay, so you see how that green is. You can even make it go darker adding ultramarine blue and burnt sienna even a little bit more. These are just very basic mixtures. But do you see how this green um, is much duller? It's darker, of course, it's a different value. 
but it's also um, just easier on the eye. This might be good for evergreens. I would go even darker or bluer. Okay. And keep adding just that touch of ultramarine of uh, burnt sienna. You could also be using um, burnt umber, which is another color I like, another earth tone, but it's not necessary. Okay, I'm going to leave that. And um, let's try what happens when we mix a little bit. And you have to go very, very minimal, be very, very minimal with the quinacridone or the permanent rose if you're using the same uh, brand name. Okay, you can see it's already toned down. I mean, just look at the difference. That's just with a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Do you see how little I'm adding? So that also uh, seems to be working nicely. You can also add some of the burnt sienna to this. Shall we see what happens when we do that? We will dull it down even more. I don't know if you can see the difference between the two. And just for uh, and let's just add yellow and see what happens there. This yellow here, uh, this green, this yellow green, I might use as maybe that much. Can you see that? Like hardly any. It's really powerful. And if you're putting it against the rest of your painting, it'll get gaudy. Greens are difficult, 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 especially for beginners. And yeah, you can go out and find greens that are these different shades, uh, but you won't know how to handle them when you come to mix your own colors. So if you start out with a limited palette and work with that, mix your greens, learn, grow, make the mistakes that you need to make, then when you're when you've got plenty of mixing greens under your belt go ahead and buy yourself a tube because you'll you'll know what to do with it so this is gaudy um i like the burnt sienna with greens because it it uh it's kind of an orangey green so i can do two things i can mix burnt sienna in see what happens that's a lot of burnt sienna for this green but look how lovely that is burnt sienna is basically an a dark orange a grayed down orange color so look at that that is a fabulous green and here is a little bit darker brownish version do you see that okay now, if we add quinacridone, it's probably too much. Remember, very, very little. It will also um, make it more orange because of the yellow that we have in the mixture. But look at that. That can be used in a tree or grass. Uh, in the foreground where it's warmer. So these color combinations here, I would just stay away from that. I probably wouldn't even use it in a highlight area. You would be surprised how easily the eye sees greens, even if you're using very dull colors that you have mixed. Very grayed down, dull greens. Your eye, when you look at the painting, will see green and oftentimes be quite intense greens. Here's the last one. We're going to mix some of the white and look what happens here. Again, makes it pasty and kind of blech. So this, for me, would go into the background area, but not like that. 
I would definitely add burnt sienna or burnt umber. So that can be used a green in the backside of the midground and the background if you have uh, uh, hills and you want to just get a sense that there's greenery going up there but you wouldn't use this one let's add again i'm going to go with the quinacridone what will happen it just cools it down you can also use that in your um, in your background hills or the background trees just give it the sense that they are just really far away push back into the background and that's uh, look at the range of greens that we have mixed and this is nothing I haven't added white to any of these I haven't added more blue to any of these or the quinacridone you can go on and on and on so stay away from pre-mixed greens you don't need them and let's say then you have your range of greens with this palette but you really want to have warmer greens, just generally warmer. You could add like an Indian yellow, a very warm yellow, and mix it with the ultramarine blue, and you'll get a whole new set of greens that are different than this here, just because of the warmer shade of yellow. Or you could go with a warmer blue and see what you can come up with there. It's endless. So don't go and buy any greens. You'll save yourself a ton of money. Just get your limited palette, maybe a uh, burnt sienna, which for me, I think is my favorite to use generally because I'm in the Mediterranean. I like the warm colors and it is good for my Mediterranean palette here in Greece. Okay, so now we're gonna take some of these colors and put them on uh, canvas and you can see what's going on there. Okay, so we're going to do this so that you can see um, the differences between toning your canvas and an untoned canvas. Now this is paper and it's soaking up paint because I haven't prepped it with gesso and I'll do a video on that as well. I'm going to start with the white I watered it down a little bit. I put too much turpentine. I didn't dab the brush off. So that's not good. That's the first one. And here it is mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna. So can you see the difference? Same green. Okay, there we go. So you can see with just a little tiny bit of burnt sienna, what happens, how it changes the color. Now I'm going to put on the green mixture with extra yellow, the same color with burnt sienna. See that? That's with a quinacridone. That's pretty close, but there is a slight difference. I don't know if you can see the difference because of the glare on the page because it's white. Here is with the ultramarine blue and yellow. And now let's get, can you see the change? Okay, it's quite beautiful. Now, Let's go with the same thing down here. And this is just to show how a toned background can change your perception of what you're looking at. Uh, the light green with the burnt sienna. Do you see how different the colors look? They're the same colors, but because of the burnt sienna wash, in the background, uh, it comes off differently. Okay, going with this next one. See how it already tones it down from this one up here. Let's add that with a burnt sienna. 
and it has a different effect because of the burnt sienna background. So it's like adding more of the burnt sienna than what was there. So when you add a toned background, first of all, it immediately gives a certain layer of harmony to all the colors. Let's say you're mixing colors on the palette and you want the, the entire palette to be harmonized. You would add a little bit of, let's say, burnt sienna into all the colors, even the whites. You would just a tiny bit, but it would be there. So then all the colors will be harmonized. And a tone canvas, depending on the type you're painting, you can do will begin to do that. But that's not the reason why you should use a toned canvas. Mostly it's because a toned canvas will help you see your colors more easily. Look at that. Okay. This, uh, it's soaking into the canvas, uh, into the paper a little bit here. So that's just a fact of not toning the canvas. Also, when you tone the canvas, it will create a first layer and protect the paints from sinking in too much. Okay, so have a look at that. And those are just mixing greens with the three primary colors and burnt sienna. And look at all the different colors that you can use. You really don't need any more greens in the landscape than these right here. Okay, so there you have it. A bunch of greens, you know, from three colors, uh, four with the burnt sienna. And if your wash is like, I don't know, um, a yellowish uh, orangey color, uh, this is a darker orangey color. So let's go with a yellowish or a blue. Uh, uh, all of these colors here, your greens will look slightly different. And if you're a beginner and you can't see the difference, don't worry about it. It takes a while for the eye to begin to open up and uh, decipher and uh, compute and give you the information. It can take a long time, especially with greens. So give it a try. Stay away from the white background. Tone it with something. I love burnt sienna. It's a great place to start, especially for beginners. Just do that and let's see what we can do. Go for it. Try your greens, try painting something in green, like I don't know, a pear, like I have there. Um, just, just do it, play around with it and start mixing those colors. Mixing your own colors will give you a breadth of information and knowledge and wisdom in how to paint better paintings. And through that exploration, you will find that the rest of your life becomes also a deeper exploration. For example, on a little tiny level, when you start mixing your own greens, you will begin to notice the greens that you see around you. Are they more blue? Are they uh, more orange or or dulled or grayed or olive colored greens, all sorts of things. You just begin to notice. And the more you notice, the more you can bring back into your painting, not only within yourself, but also in what you manifest, the paintings that you manifest into this world. So with that, uh, will you please subscribe? I'm trying to get to a thousand so I can really begin to push this channel forward and uh, be able to uh, spend more time here and give you everything that I have. And click that notification bell so that you are uh, informed when I have a new video up. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Ask me anything. I will do my best to give you the best answer possible. All right then, have a beautiful, beautiful day.